And this one is going to be some respect by Rick James' name because songwriter, producer, performer, live artist, Rick James did it up, you know, born and bred in Buffalo, New York. He was something else. He was way more than Super Freak. And he's way more than that lame, overrated Dave Chappelle skit, you know, because I mean, whatever. I mean, now I guess that was cute and fun and games. And of course, Charlie Murphy got in on rest in peace to Charlie Murphy. Etc. But, you know, when you talk about a career and you look at a songwriter and body work, well, Rick James was no joke. He was a true producer, composer, arranger. You know, like Lady T eulogized him really well on the BET Awards after he died, and she broke it down. Well, Rick James gave you a little something of everything. He had an orchestra thing going. He had a big band swing thing going. He had a harmony thing going. It's not too many people that vocally he could channel um, Eddie Levert, and yet, you know, he rocked with the rock, swing with the swing. I mean, he had an incredible array of skill set and tone and feel and music and so much depth to what he was doing as an artist, you know. I mean, he hit, I'll tell the truth, you know, because I'm going to tell it like it is. Rick James at one time, was bigger than Michael, Prince, and Lionel, okay? You know, without the crossover marketing that they had. All due respect and respect to all those artists because I, you know, dug all those artists and I dig all them artists. But Rick James' thing was like, he sold triple platinum street songs, for instance, without an MTV or a money making machine because he worked for Black Label, Motown, just like Lionel did. But Rick's thing was even more, you know, was raw than what Lionel was going for. Rick didn't get that kind of love. Not like that. So, I mean, his thing hit the streets. His music, uh, tell you about, just to use Super Freak as an example, pops off for the R&B pop, and then a decade later, a hip-hop crowd that comes along a whole different era, and you get an MC Hammer comes like exactly like a decade later, pretty much. Hits when you can't touch this, so it takes on a whole nother life. How, who else does that? I mean, that was the greatness of Rick James. I'll tell you that in a nutshell. Well, you can take one song that blended for a particular audience and then it gets turned to a different title, take the same music, and then it flips for a whole different era of ears and, and tone. That was one of a kind. That was something about his music that had that lasting impact, that lasting spell. And he definitely uh, follows in the great band leaders and great musicianship and talents that have been displayed so uh, I always want to put respect by Rick James's name because he was more than a catchphrase he was a serious artist right there who did some serious things musically and made a lot of lives better for his greatness spoke his mind told the truth about the music business and was honest about what he saw and what he heard there was no sugar coat about it because you know, he, he went to the belly of the beast and said, yo, this is what's up. This is how we do this. So definitely got to pay your respects and homage to one of the all-time greats. More than just the funk of tear, this guy, the incredible R&B ballads, could write great pop melodies. Uh, he had blues, he had jazz, he had swing. Shoot, he's one of the, he's one of the most important people in the hip-hop movement because how many careers have been made off of Rick James samples and loops? You know, just do the math. Look it up. A lot of careers, a lot of people have been eating off of Rick James's music. So I wanted to put respect on his name. All right.